Why are both Samsung and Apple turning their backs on Qualcomm, the company that powers many of their devices? It might sound risky at first. After all, Qualcomm makes some of the best smartphone chips in the world. But for both tech giants, the reason is simple. Qualcomm is just too expensive. And now they're ready to walk away, even if their own solutions aren't perfect yet. Let's start with Samsung. The company has had a love-hate relationship with Qualcomm for years. Most of their phones come with Snapdragon chips in some countries and Samsung's own Exynos chips in others. But Snapdragon processors usually perform better, and fans around the world have noticed. That's why Samsung used Snapdragon chips only for the Galaxy S23 and S25 series globally. But now, Samsung plans to go back to a regional strategy. The next Galaxy S26 phones will likely be split again, with some using the new Snapdragon and others powered by Samsung's own Exynos 2600 chip. It's a 2 nanometer processor that's still in development. Due to some production issues, Samsung might only use Exynos in Europe and a few other markets for now. Still, this shows something very important. Samsung really wants to stop depending on Qualcomm and fully switch to its own Exynos chips in the future. Snapdragon might be better at the moment, but Samsung sees that as temporary, and they're not the only ones making moves. Apple is doing something very similar. They've been working for years on their own modem chip to replace Qualcomm's, and now, with the iPhone 16e, they've done it. The new Apple C1 modem may not be as good as Qualcomm's yet, but it works. And that's a huge deal. Apple's next step is to roll out this in-house modem to more iPhones. The base model iPhone 17 and the upcoming iPhone 17 Air are expected to use Apple's C1 chip. Eventually, all Apple devices will likely ditch Qualcomm modems completely. But why go through all this trouble? Because buying chips from someone else is expensive. For Samsung, using Snapdragon in every Galaxy S25 cost them around $400 million. For Apple, the issue is the high licensing fees Qualcomm charges for using their tech. Both companies know that by using their own chips, even if they're not perfect, they save a lot of money in the long run. And here's the interesting part. For most users, the difference in performance isn't noticeable. Sure, tech enthusiasts might care, but the average person just wants a phone that works well. Whether it's Exynos, Snapdragon, or Apple's C1, as long as the phone runs smoothly, people are happy. So where does this leave Qualcomm? They're not going to disappear overnight. They're still a huge player. But their grip on the smartphone market is starting to slip. Analysts are saying Qualcomm's future looks uncertain. Could Samsung's new foldable phone finally be the one to make waves in the tech world? Rumors are swirling about Samsung's upcoming Galaxy tri-foldable smartphone, which is expected to launch later this year. What's even more exciting than its folding design? Well, it looks like Samsung is stepping up its game in the battery department too. Thanks to a reliable leak, we now know that the tri-foldable will feature a silicon carbon battery. So, why is this such a big deal? First, Let's break down what makes this battery tech different. Silicon carbon batteries are all about improving performance without making the phone thicker. These batteries can store more power than traditional lithium-ion batteries while maintaining the same size. That means even with a compact design, your phone could last longer, and that's a win for any tech lover. This change is pretty significant because Samsung has been a bit slow in adopting newer battery technologies. In fact, their latest flagship, phone, the Galaxy S25 Ultra, still charges at 45 watts, while other phones are already pushing past 100 watts in charging speed. So the fact that Samsung is finally using silicon carbon batteries in their new tri-foldable is something many have been waiting for. Now, you might be wondering, what's the catch? Well, it looks like the Galaxy tri-foldable isn't going to be for everyone. In fact, only about 200,000 units will be produced at first, and it's only going to be available in select regions. The reason? It's going to be expensive. We're talking a phone that's likely priced at the top end, which is why Samsung doesn't expect to sell too many units initially. But why all the focus on battery life? With a phone that folds three times, the tri-foldable will feature a massive display. And massive displays need a lot of power. That's where the silicon carbon battery comes in. Even though the battery capacity is said to be less than 5,000 mAh, which is fairly standard for many Samsung phones these days, the silicon carbon tech allows it to still offer solid performance, despite the smaller size. Now, even 
With the upgraded battery, we're not expecting amazing battery life. Why? Because all that power will be used up by the giant display and the foldable tech. So even with the silicon carbon battery, the tri-foldable will likely have only average battery life. That said, it's still better than what we've seen from other foldables that don't have this new technology. What's even more impressive is that silicon carbon batteries are more durable. This durability is a big plus for a phone like the tri-foldable, which will likely see a lot of wear and tear as users unfold and refold it multiple times throughout the day. This all points to one thing. Samsung is finally making some much-needed upgrades to its battery technology. The fact that it's being applied to a foldable phone makes sense, too, because foldables require a special kind of innovation to ensure they don't sacrifice performance for design. Samsung's move to silicon carbon could very well set the stage for more foldables that offer better longevity, faster charging, and improved durability. But will the prototype pass all its tests? That's the big question. If it does, we could see the Galaxy Tri Foldable push the boundaries of what we expect from smartphones, with the perfect mix of cutting-edge design and better battery performance. So what do you think? Are you excited about Samsung's new Tri Foldable and its silicon carbon battery? Or do you think the price tag will be too high for most people to consider? Let us know in the comments. And if you want to stay updated with all the latest tech news, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. Can a phone really be super thin and strong enough to handle daily use? Samsung thinks so, and the upcoming Galaxy S25 Edge might prove it. With a body that's just about 585 millimeters thick, this phone is expected to be the thinnest Galaxy S flagship ever made. But the real surprise isn't just its slim size, it's what Samsung is using to protect the screen. Samsung has teamed up with Corning, the makers of Gorilla Glass, to create something brand new. Gorilla Glass Ceramic. Oh, and yes, it's as advanced as it sounds. This new glass isn't just thinner, it's also stronger. Corning says it blends regular glass with tiny crystals, then puts it through a special ion process. That combo helps the glass spread out the impact from drops or bumps. So even though the phone is slim, it's still protected. Usually when... Phones get thinner, they lose out on strength. There's less room for reinforced frames or thick glass panels, but Samsung didn't want to make that trade-off. With Gorilla Glass Ceramic 2, they've found a way to keep the phone sleek without giving up on durability. This move matters, especially when you look at what other phone makers are doing. Apple is rumored to be launching the iPhone 17 Air later, this year possibly just 5.5 millimeters thick. They might use a new aluminum lithium frame and a custom glass formula to make it work. And Chinese brands like Honor and Xiaomi have released ultra-thin models under 6 millimeters. But here's the catch. Those phones often use mid-range chips or smaller batteries to save space. Samsung isn't doing that. The Galaxy S25 Edge is expected to keep its high-end display and performance features. That means you won't have to. Give up power just to get a slim phone. Now let's talk about the user experience. A phone this thin could feel more like holding a screen than a regular handset. And because Gorilla Glass Ceramic 2 is designed to take everyday wear and tear, you might not even need a screen protector. That's a bold move, but if it works, it could change how we think about phone protection. Of course, there's still one big question. What about the battery? Samsung hasn't confirmed battery size yet, and with such a thin frame, there might be less room for a large battery. That's something we'll need to keep an eye on when the full specs are revealed. Tatar. Official launch of the Galaxy S25 Edge is just around the corner. Samsung will be unveiling the phone on Monday, May 12th, live on their YouTube channel at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. That's when we'll finally get the full picture, including more details on the glass, design, performance, and possibly the battery. Life. This release could be a big moment, not just for Samsung, but for the entire smartphone industry.